many years ago, Kupe chased the Fike o Mutirangi across the Pacific Ocean, leaving behind Hawaii and Rangiatea. He chased the giant octopus all the way across the ocean until they came to a cloud capped land. Aotearoa. From the head of Tika Amawi to the bottom of Te Waipo Namu, Kupe chased the Tanifa until finally they came head to head in a fierce battle. Kupe was successful and the octopus was defeated. When Kupe returned to Hawaii, he told his people about this faraway land full of birds, trees and fish, where Ponamu lined the riverbeds. And so, using the wind and the stars, they came. We come from all over the Asian continent, and although we are different in cultures, ours is a story woven from many strands. Just as each fibre of the harakeke makes the kite strong, our collective story is the sum of all our journeys. Iran and I was raised in Germany. Purely accidental because my parents were at the airport in Germany trying to go from Iran via Turkey to Canada but were caught in transit without a visa. Their options were being sent back or seeking asylum. So we became accidental Germans. So my mom had a degree in what was called like electronics. Yeah, sure. And she was told that her profession was a male profession and that she should maybe consider going and becoming a nurse. And she was quite shocked, you know, being a woman coming from Iran, going to Germany and then being told in Germany that your profession was a male profession. Me and my sister, we learned the language as kids do because you're sponges. Me and my sister kind of became the translator for my parents. Like teacher parent conferences, I think, are quite funny when you have you know, a seven, eight-year-old translating. But that's the reality of so many, so many immigrant families. Yeah, so there's seven different things that start with the letter Sin. So each one represents something else. So Samanu is a sweet wheat pudding and usually symbolizes affluence and the, these little fruits are the fruits of the oleaster tree. You put the coins for abundance, sabze and the little goldfish would be rebirth and the egg is for fertility. You put the mirror up for basically reflection and garlic is usually for health and possibly this one too. I might be wrong. So Nauru's is usually the date, is obviously for the Northern Hemisphere, is always on spring equinox. So of course in the Southern Hemisphere, it falls on autumn equinox. So it basically is when everything comes back to life in the Northern Hemisphere, that's why it is the new year. And it is actually a pre-Islamic tradition and it's celebrated mainly in Iran, but actually also in places like Afghanistan. So there's different ethnic groups and religious groups that celebrate. No rules. So you can have a book of poetry if you're not religious, or you have your holy book on it if you are. It 
took me a really long time to think of things that happened to me as racist. I went to a very small primary school. I remember somebody on the bus called me a foreigner pig, which I remember thinking was not nice, but I don't recall being really upset about it. And you know, I knew that pig wasn't a nice thing to say to somebody, but what was a foreigner? My teacher gave us a lecture the next day. So I thought, oh, okay, so this must have been a lot worse than I, what I thought it was. I can definitely tell that people would talk to my parents in a certain manner. But my parents would often say, well, that's because we came from somewhere else. When we talk about being othered, I think it refers to being seen as these people who are somehow inferior and that our ways of being in our culture or our religion is somehow inherently different. So many of us grew up with names that actually weren't ours. Our name changed from Chan to Chong when grandfather came to New Zealand in 1893. The immigration officer asked him what his name was, Chan Xing Chong. So Chong was written down as the surname. So I grew up Suzanne Chong, but actually I'm a Chan. This is very, very common in the New Zealand Chinese from that era. You've got brothers with uh, completely different surnames. Tongji, <laughs> Owen. Are you sure? I think so, I think so. <laughs> well, this is the first time I've won a game. <laughs> All the time I've been playing here, this is the first time I've actually won a, won a hand. <laughs> Sorry. Dad was born in Manaya in 1923. Mum was born in Opanaki in Taranaki. I don't remember seeing anyone who was Chinese in Manaya. When we would go to Opanaki to see Grandma, my uncles and aunties were there. So they would have been all the Chinese people that I saw. They spoke Chinese. Mum and Dad spoke Chinese to them. But my brother and I, Colin, we didn't understand because Mum and Dad didn't speak to us in Chinese. It's a great sadness, actually. There was a lot of racism against Chinese. So assimilation, you know, people talked about it proudly in the Chinese community. Oh, she's so well assimilated. I think that sense of not wanting to be Chinese ran deep 